Slam the door I messed up on the bedroom floor What the hell do we do this for? I push you up, but you come back That attraction, we can't fight that Oh, keep telling
Hey y'all, so these are the flowers that I'm using. My link will be in the bio to where you can purchase all this stuff from, honey. I'm using these Gorilla Glue hot glue sticks with this little ass uh, mini temperature thing, this hot glue stick thing. And then these are all the flowers. Now we need to take these stems off of these damn things. And that's what they look like, you know, when all of the stems are gone. And I'm gonna show y'all how y'all do that. So first things first, all you need to do is take the back piece of that wire and just pull it out. That's it. And then for this motherfucker, I had to fucking toss it with that bitch, that big walrus back ass bitch. Look at that. Then uh, it come off, you see, I bent it. But these just, you know, mama had a baby and the head popped off. That's what you do with these damn things right here. And they just come off so simple. Same thing with the damn leaves, honey. It's all so simple to take apart. And then once you do that, honey, you're just going to put some hot glue on the back. Now, this this glue right here take about 45 seconds to dry, honey. So expect to do the damn mannequin challenge, honey, because you're going to be there for a while with this shit, honey. Um, but I'm using the Gorilla Glue to keep it on the wall because y'all know I got kids. They get to pulling on this shit. And so far, they only pulled one off and it's not noticeable. Okay. So you just gonna apply some pressure, put it there, you know what I'm saying? Like it was a wound, like you're trying to stop the bleeding. And after all the roses is on there, that's what it looked like. I just showed y'all, you can barely see the damn cord thing. Now we're gonna move on to these crinkly goddamn things. And the same technique, glue the back and push them bitches on there. Mm -hmm. That's it, that's it, so simple. We're gonna do the same thing for these little ass roses. And that's what it's looking like. So it's coming together, y'all. It's coming to goddamn together. And then, um... This is what it looked like when it's all done. That's giving my wild side, honey. It's giving sweet, romantic. It's giving everything backdrop. You see how that look around that damn outlet, honey? Everything is perfect. Everything is cute, honey. It looked like a real garden of roses and flowers, honey. It just, yes, ma'am. This scream nature to me, honey. This scream me. God damn it. This is all me. That's why my name on the damn thing, because this is me, honey. This is everything about me. So, yeah, what y'all think about it? Then I get, I had Connie get up here and try to do some shots, honey. And this child right here, she do too damn much. She just, oh, my Lord. You see her making them funny faces? Then she got mad at me because I took the damn nookie, y'all. And then I was like, well, I ain't going to give it back. So she was, she, you know, she had a little attitude. But what y'all think? Y'all like it? After revealing my DIY bin shed last week, here is the how-to. Firstly, I pulled the back off one of the pallets, then cut the other two to remove the sides and back as well. I wanted to keep the front structure as much as possible, then continued on to sanding everything down. Using wood screws and corner braces, I then attached the front to the side of my shed. This allowed me to attach the next bit of wood to the side of the shed, which would act as a support structure for the top. The top was the two pallets that I cut down earlier, which meant they were already secured through the middle. After screwing the top into the back, it was time to measure up and cut off the excess wood. Finally, I attached some small pieces of wood underneath and the last leg to support the front of the structure. Then I painted it in Coastal Cliff by Wilco and here's the result. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to follow Jen's Home Journal for more. Hi there. Guess what I did this morning? I went shopping. This came from Walmart. I opted for the big fat one because I just thought it would be sturdier for what I needed for. I also went to Dollar Tree and I got this red bowl and I was so excited that they had it in red otherwise. If they had it in white, I would have to take it and paint it red. So, you're moving the tables. And we'll get started. So first things first, I'm gonna move this off to the side. And I'm gonna grab some White Waverly chalk paint. Grab a dauber. I'm gonna take my red bowl. Now, like I said, you don't have to do it red. On, this is just what I'm gonna do. But if you've got a bowl of a different color, you could do different. You could get multiple bowls and do different colors. It'll be cute, just as cute. So let me go ahead and pour some of this paint. Ouch. Okay, so I'm just coating my sponge, and then I'm just gonna. Go on like that. I'm just gonna do that in a few spots all the way around the bowl. This is how I'm getting the paint on to the dauber. I'm just smearing it on so that it's not too gloopy and I'm pushing it into the sponge. And I just go back and I 
got a little more, get a little more paint on there. That's where I'm at right now. Once I've got all the dots I want on my bowl, I'm gonna put it off to the side to dry. Now I'm gonna grab my pool noodle and a measuring tape. I'm gonna measure out a foot and mark it. And then I'm just gonna take a utility knife and I'm gonna cut that off. Like this. Now I'm gonna paint this also with the white chalk paint. I'm just gonna daub this all the way on here. Cover the whole thing. Once you're done painting this all the way around, put it off to the side, let it dry. And then we're going to take our bowl and we're going to give it a coat of Mod Podge, uh, outdoor Mod Podge, so that it'll seal it. Come back for part two. Okay, so then I just took some tan Craft Smart and I put some stripes on here. And now I'm just using a wet paintbrush to make them blend a little bit better so they don't look like I just put some stripes on here. Just to give this a little more texture and color. Okay, and I'm gonna let that dry off to the side. Once everything's dry, um, what you're gonna do, and I'm gonna just explain to you what to do because I can't do it right now because I have to let things cure. But you're going to put a coat of Mod Podge all over this next so that it will seal the paint on use outdoor mod podge or dishwasher safe mod podge and that'll protect it if it rains and then you're going to take a dowel you're going to nail the dowel in to the ground hammer it down there and then you're going to put this over the dowel like this Easier said than done. Okay, and then you're going to take also Mod Podge to protect it. This is going to be like this on the ground. And you're going to put this on top. And this is going to be a little garden mushroom. So, like I said, we have to Mod Podge. And Mod Podge should be left to cure at least 24 to 48 hours to fully cure before you put it outside so that it will stay preserved but yeah once you're done doing the mod podge hammer in your dowel slide that over so that it'll hold it up and then put your bowl on top and there you have it you could hot glue that on if you want it's really up to you but that's all there is to it so I hope you like this craft. You can make, you can buy smaller bowls, cut this smaller, make little bowls, different colors, make a bigger one, get a bigger bowl. Dollar Tree is where I got this red bowl. You can get them in any color though, in different sh shapes and sizes, and really have quite the cute little garden. So I hope you like this craft. I hope you come back. I hope you like, follow, and share my videos, and I'll keep making them if you keep watching them.
So we fade in the rhythm 